Don't run. Come on out here. The screen is going to do the talking this morning. So we're going to watch a video. I'll do my best. If John put up a video this morning for us, we're going to watch a video about a guy called a man named John. God's story, John the Baptist. So part of God's story is about a man we call John the Baptist, and it begins like this. Hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born, a man named Isaiah wrote that somebody would come to prepare people for Jesus' arrival. He was talking about a guy named John the Baptist. Well, actually, his name was John. We call him the Baptist because he baptized a lot of people. Anyway, before John was even born, an angel appeared to his dad and said, Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your wife Elizabeth will have a child. It will be a boy, and you must name him John. He will be important in the Lord's eyes. John was important because he would get people ready for Jesus, who was coming to rescue us. Did we mention that John was Jesus' cousin? Pretty crazy, huh? Well, right from the beginning, John was a bit unusual. For starters, he spent the first part of his life in the wilderness. Maybe he slept on the ground and used rocks for pillows. Maybe he brushed his teeth with sticks. Maybe he used leaves as toilet paper. We don't know. All the Bible tells us is that he stayed in the desert until he started telling people about Jesus. Then, when he came back into civilization, he still seemed strange. He wore clothes made out of camel's hair and a leather belt. Imagine how itchy hairy clothes must have been. And for food, he ate locusts dipped in honey, just like he had eaten in the desert. You know what a locust is? It's a grasshopper. But don't worry, you don't have to eat bugs to follow Jesus. Anyway, John didn't come back from the desert to live like everybody else. He came back to teach people about Jesus. So he started telling everybody that God loves us so much, he's sending his own son to rescue us. This made a lot of people want to follow God and his son, Jesus. So John began baptizing them. That's how he got his nickname. Kids, baptism is what we do when we decide to tell everybody that we're following Jesus. While John was baptizing and teaching, some people thought he might be the rescuer. He seemed really smart, and he knew a lot about God. But John knew he needed Jesus to rescue him, just like everybody else. So he said, someone who is more powerful than I am will come. I'm not good enough to untie the straps of his sandals. John was making a point by talking about Jesus' feet. See, back then, everyone's feet were almost always dirty because they wore sandals, stepped in dust and camel poop, and didn't have showers. So when John said he wasn't good enough to untie Jesus' sandals, he was basically saying that he would feel lucky if he could help Jesus with his dirty feet. That's how much John loved Jesus. Well, even though John told everybody about Jesus, he was actually waiting for the rescue too. Then one day, he was baptizing people in the Jordan River. Jesus came to the shore and asked John to baptize him. Kids, remember how John thought he'd be lucky to help Jesus clean his feet? John didn't think he was good enough to baptize Jesus, but Jesus told John to do it. And when John baptized Jesus, something really special happened. The Holy Spirit came down from heaven like a dove, and God actually said out loud, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. The Bible says that heaven opened up and John got to be a part of that with Jesus, all because he had given his whole life to follow him. And that's the story of John the Baptist. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. John was an important part of God's story. He was Jesus' cousin. He lived in the desert. He ate bugs. He told people Jesus was coming. He baptized people who wanted to follow God. He got to baptize Jesus. John followed Jesus his whole life. And that's a part of God's story. So what do you like about that part of God's story? What do you, what do you, what do you think, Riley? Anything? You ever eaten grasshoppers? <laughs> Have you? No. What? It's important. Have you, if I was going to make a road... I would probably, first thing I might get is a bulldozer. And I'd get on that bulldozer and I'd plow out all the stuff in front of me, the trees, and make, try to make it level and make it flat and make it smooth. Kind of think like that's kind of what John the Baptist did before Jesus 
burst onto the scene. John the Baptist plowed ahead of Jesus and made a, a path for, him, for Jesus to walk into. He prepared the, the way for Jesus. Now, I've got my little John the Baptist bobblehead. Head still attached for all you out there. Um, it was that's another part of the story we'll not get into. But John the Baptist was a great man, and, and Jesus' cousin. You guys have cut you guys are cousins, right? Okay. Jesus and John the Baptist were cousins. And and they were friends. And I know they loved each other and cared about each other, but they they, they didn't ministry together. They talked about God's love and they told us to repent or ask God to forgive us of our sins and come back to God. And that was the very important message. And he baptized people in the Jordan River. And I want to show you a picture of the Jordan River. That's the picture of the Jordan River. Who do you think that guy is? Without hair. Yeah, that's me. I got to go get into the Jordan River and that's a friend of mine, Chris. And we, for each other, we remembered our baptism in the Jordan River. And uh, just where Jesus had his baptism. And that's over in Israel is where that took place. Water was kind of cold. It was this time of the year. It was February, so water was kind of cold. But we were in the Jordan River. And I always... Have, Why is there like little... Things? Railings, they had a path you can walk on that was a little bit smoother because we were barefoot. And so we didn't step outside. It got, water got real... A little bit deeper out there, so they wanted to keep us in an area where we we could walk. So, but I, so I've always um, I always liked this this story of John the Baptist because he made Jesus first and foremost, and whenever he baptized Jesus, then John kind of stepped back because it was Jesus' time to tell everybody about the kingdom of God. Hmm. So. Let's, this morning, let's, let's just pause for a moment. I, I want you to pause with, we're going to pray. Did you guys also, one of the sad things that happened this past week, and you're our children here, was in school in Florida, there, were, there was a bad shooting down there. And a lot of lives were affected. A lot of children lost their lives. And that makes us really sad, but makes us also want things to change so that doesn't happen again. So can we just pray for a minute for schools and for your safety and for a, a better way for us to live our lives but together? They, the they, they died. Oh. Yeah, by gunshots. They died. <laughs> yeah, let's pray. God, we are thankful for your servant John who baptized and asked us to repent and to change and to come to you. Lord, I thank you for these children because they're learning about you, that they, their life can be changed by you and they have a place always to go. Lord, we, we have a heavy heart this morning for the loss of lives in Florida once again and for the freshness of another tragedy and, and um, just a, 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 a senseless, needless act of violence. Lord, um, I think John had it right. Your, your cousin, to repent, to, to turn away from evil, to turn away from a sinful nature, to turn to what is right, and that is you, O oh God. And, and Lord, there may be somebody right now that's contemplating another evil act, and Lord, I pray for repentance and turning and changing, a change of heart that you can do for them. Pray for safety for our children, these special loving children here that you've given to us. Watch over, protect them, and, and uh, guide their, li their lives. And Lord, uh, teach us as a nation through this to be more faithful, more loving, and more caring about one another, and also to be more watchful of things around us where we might be at help to the, some of these kids that are struggling or troubled. This we ask through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Okay, guys, God bless you all. Thanks for coming this morning, and you get to go to Children's Church.